kinuha, that's in us. Hindi tayo na-object. Whether we like it or not. Why? Because we are made for something greater than what our eyes can see. Everything that we see will all disappear. But God has wired us to long for something that will last forever. Advent comes from a Latin word 
kurang sehat. Lagi lagi mental. Mental apa ni? Advent comes from a Latin word Adventus, which means coming. And I like Saint Augustine. What Saint Augustine is our patron saint in our hometown. Again, they are. God bless again, Dioro. Yes, you can see Melissa, who knows what they're going to do with Dioro? Ever, who knows what they're going to do with Jella? Or all of them are going to be a good one. Yeah, you're going to be a good one. But you're going to be a good one. Who's going to be a good one? You're going to be a good one. Anyway, San Vicente Agosin, there are three comings. That what we're what we're talking about here. There are three comings. Hindi ako nagkamali, no? Three. Hindi nagkita yan. Three comings. One, the first coming, is that Christmas. Sometimes people would say it's the birthday of Jesus Christ. It is true, it's the birthday of Jesus Christ, but it's also more than just the birthday of Jesus Christ. It's also known as the Feast of the Incarnation. In carne, carne is but flesh. It's God taking on our flesh. It's not just a birth of a king, but it's really God becoming human. And you know what? We hear the the the, the songs. Silent night, very very peaceful, right? Oh, Bata ka, it's it's like a lullaby, but Christmas is actually crossing the enemy line. It's invasion. God invading all darkness of what's happening in the world because He wants to bring His light, and that's one of the things we remember for Christmas. It's just just a baby Jesus, but it's God becoming man, coming, the first coming. The second coming we're talking about here is the coming of Jesus Christ. This time, he's now on his white horse, riding on the clouds. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds. <laughs> he comes this time as the judge to separate the wheat from the weeds to separate the sheep from the goats <laughs> from the goats it's a time of reckoning that's the time when we look into ourselves am I prepared for the coming the first and the second it's visible you see God becoming man you see a real baby the second coming you see God Jesus riding on the clouds coming and judging the third coming is invisible that's why you cannot see it as in three comings it's the coming of our lord into our life and that happens every day so that gives us a signal that advent is not just actually for four sundays or for four weeks advent should be a daily theme in our life it should be all year round as long as you are still breathing Advent should be real in our life. So it's okay that even during the time that I'm speaking, if you hear the Lord, pause. You can shut your ears, you can shut you, you, you can redirect your attention from me and to God. If, if you're if you're inspired to bow down and pray, that's okay. But I want to say to because this is a recollection, we have to gather, we have to recollect. We spend the whole year scattering our life. We did this. We've been there. A lot of times, we're just busy. This is time, at the end of the year, for us to recollect. To collect our lives and say, And that's a crucial time for us to be very, very open to the Lord. And allow and ask God, Lord, allow me to see my life the way you see it. This is the way I want it, but most importantly, Lord, the way you see my life. Give me the grace. Um, is, is my life pleasing to you? I want to share to you a 
a time that I had with a very important man in my life. This is not the Chinese Santa Claus. <laughs> it's my dad. And, uh, well, I don't have, I think, his genes. <laughs> he, he, he has what? Hair. <laughs> he looks Chinese. I look Italian. <laughs> Actually, I'm Italian. Italiano. Half Ita, half Ilocano. <laughs> Italiano. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can if you share this to you. And my dad came from a very poor family. Pagpulan, nagka-problema talaga sa kanila yan. Kasi expected yan na pasay ang bahay. May butas yung bubong. Nakapaada lang nila, nagtuloy pa rin. So my dad had a very simple dream. Lord, makabahay lang ako ng walang tulog, buong kayo sa akin. Sabi niya, hindi naman tayo dream ko, pero alam mo yun, nung nakabahay na tayo, hindi ako kontento. Sabi niya, sana makapunta naman ako sa mas magandang bahay. Tapos, pinagawa namin yung bahay. Gumanda na. Naghanap pa rin siya ng ibang bahay. Sana naman yung bahay na pwede yung mga patungan ng snow. So, lumipat sila sa ibang lugar. And then, nung nandunan kami, nandunan siya, nakala mo, sabi niya, ito, nandito na tayo. Pero, hindi pa rin ako kontento. Kaya binigay na naman panginoon sa akin yung lahat ng mga hindi nito. So, bakit hindi pa rin ako kontento? Kasi sabi niya, yung tao talaga, hindi na ako kontento. And you know what? That's in us now. Hindi tayo na-obtain. Whether we like it or not. Why? Because we are made for something greater than what our eyes can see. Everything that we see will all disappear. But God has wired us to long for something that will last forever. Because each one of us is made for eternity. This is the message of Advent. This is what we need to contemplate. That let's focus not only on things that we see, but things beyond our eyes can see. In Colossians, St. Paul said, look not on the things below, but things that are above, where Christ is. Let's not be limited to, to what we can touch. There are things that we cannot touch, but we know that they exist. I don't know if, if, if you have experienced this. Looking at something very, very beautiful, or experiencing something very, very beautiful. Kung minsan minsan sasabihin natin na, pwede na akong mamatay. Di ba? Parang, yes, nakakain na ako ng Jayco. So, <laughs> We're saying that jokingly, but honestly, but pa ulit ulit pa tayo ng mga tigor, hindi nasa satisfied because we long for something more. When you look at the sunset, I like photography. I'm a frustrated photographer. I like to capture beautiful things. Kaya may picture ako yung dalili ko, yung pato. Gusto yan sa Facebook, no? Mga profile pic, mga paay na yung hirap. What I'm trying to say is, have you experienced that pain? Sa sobrang ganda, parang, there's, hindi lang siya mas sayang, mas sayang, sayang naman, pero it's a deep joy with pain. Na, na, baka ako naman, no? Alam mo yun, parang kung di ba manungkot ka, iiyak ka. Pero sobrang tuwa mo, naiiyak ka pa rin. There's a pain in your heart that you cannot explain. It's something good. That pain actually is telling you that what you're seeing, even if it's so beautiful, will not last. Because you are made for eternity. 
you are made for heaven. Heaven is our home. We will never be satisfied here because we are meant just to live here. Well, actually, this is just the truth I would like to share. We can all go home. But I think it is important for us to ask a very important question. If this is true, if this is the truth, the question we need to ask ourselves, how ought I to live my life in light of this truth? How should it affect my life? How should the truth affect the way I live? How can I live my life to make the truth a reality not only to myself but also to others? I pray, Lord, ano ba yung sagot nito? How can I live my life in light of the truth? So while I was reflecting, I thought of two things. But then, the Lord gave me four things. And so I'm very, very thankful to the Lord because it happened during the first Sunday of Advent when we lit the first candle of the Advent. It was the epiphany. Para sa akin, wow, yung salita yung Panginoon. First time, sinindihan niyo, we were on a retreat, the whole servants of the world in the Philippines. Actually, mali na lang yun. Para lang malaki yung pakikan. Nag-retreat kami siya tagay tayo, nung sinindihan niyo yung candle. Wow. I just said, that's your life, the candle, that's your life. I want you to be burned up for me. And then I begin to realize, ano yung mga bilhing ng candles? And I would like to offer that as a way to answer how am I supposed to live my life? This will be our points of reflection. You, you will notice in, in, in the Advent ring or the candles, you will have four candles. First candle is hope, the candle of hope. What do we hope for? We hope for something that's not yet present, di ba? You don't hope for something that's already there. Sana may sipu. May sipu na lang. Merit ka na. Sana makapag-asawa na ako. Hindi ka. You hope for something that's not yet there. You hope for something that's still in the future. But let's ask ourselves, ano ba yung bring this to hope natin? What do we really hope for? Do we hope for things or someone? Things that are only found here in this lifetime? Or if we seek our heart, do we really hope for that which our eye has not yet seen? Nor our hearts can see, nor, nor our ears have heard. You know, because what is being in store for us is something greater than what we can actually imagine. Do we hope for that? Or are we limiting ourselves to only the things in this world? Do we hope for that? Do we long to see Him face to face? Because you know what? If you long to see God face to face, that will affect your life. That will affect the way you live your life. The most important is to long for that one beautiful thing. Don't limit yourself only to the things of this world. If you have five inches, this is about five inches, like multiply it five inches, that's perfect. <laughs> if you have five inches, you remove one inch, halatang halata, di ba? One inch, four inches na Pero if you have one kilometer, you move one inch, do you think that will affect? If you're running a marathon, ay, hey, sana tanggalan nila ng isang one inch. Kaya ko sana ito. Di ba hindi nagmamatter? One inch na lang. But just imagine yourself, 
one inch compared to infinity compared to eternity one inch is really really insignificant you can practically say it's non-existent compared to infinity but our life here on earth is just like that one inch compared to what is each for us in God to be with Him forever for all eternity it's for all eternity and yet we are so concerned only for that inch we spend all our efforts living our life only for that inch again no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind has ever conceived what is in store to those who love the Lord the psalmist in Psalm 42 says why are you cast down O my soul why are you disquieted within me hope in God I shall be hope in God your one inch, even if it's so insignificant, will be filled with meaning, will be filled with joy, will be filled with that deep joy and deep meaning if you hope not for one inch, if you hope in God, if you put your hope and trust in God. And this hope is not just a wishful thinking. Sana David, sana Moniari. I want to assure you, my brothers and sisters, that what the Bible is telling us, that it is beyond our imagination, imagination what God is restoring for us, that is really, really true. And our hope will never disappoint us. St. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, our hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which was given to us. God has given us the Holy Spirit his presence in our life. So we will long to be with Him in all its completeness and perfection to be with God forever for all eternity. God is giving us a guarantee, a down payment. Your hope will not disappoint you. Experiencing it now and giving you myself. The message for Advent is for us to live with that truth that we are made for all eternity. So therefore, let's not put our hope and trust in horses, as the, the, the psalmist would say, in swords, in your chariots, in your weapons, in whatever material and seemingly very secure things that the world offers. But put your trust in your hope. In the world. Question. What are the things you need to entrust in the world? We will go back to that later. You can just write it down because during the time of reflection, you ask this to yourself. What am I hoping for? Ano yung mga bagay dito na pwede kong interest sa Panginoon? Or bahala na siya. I will put my hope in you. The second candle is the candle of preparation. Very recently, we, we read passages or gospels like you will never know when the master will come. It might be the first watch, the mid watch, or the last with the cat crows. You don't know when it's coming, so be prepared. We should be ready. You know, Advent is also a reminder for us that we are just pilgrims or travelers here in this world. Like any traveler, we prepare. We pack things, di ba? The preparation that we'll be doing as travelers in this life <clears throat> is actually to unpack. To unload. Because we need to travel like that. <coughs> like any soldier. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. Do not be entangled with the things in this world. Do not be too comfortable in this world. Because we don't belong here. Part of the unloading is repentance. 
what are the things that's clinging closely to me? In Hebrews, do you remember the song? Let us run with perseverance, but get rid of those burdens of those things clinging on to you. Sin that hinders you, that's part of the preparation of the beginning. Get rid of those extra packages. <clears throat> Be on guard, keep away, for you do not know when the time will come. Be ready as the, the prophecy that we have heard from the Lord. Be vigilant. Take on the whole armor of God. Because the enemy will constantly tempt you. The enemy will constantly strike. And we need to be very, very vigilant. If you value the coming of the Lord, pakhandaan natin. I was in the catch fire rally. Who among us here was in the catch fire rally? Because when I was there, I saw the whole Coliseum. Hindi ko na may mga tao, hindi ko na may mga and then it was overwhelming that is the number of people and I can just imagine what happens in heaven when you will be surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses and just imagine yourself you standing on that stage greater than what Araneta Coliseum can actually establish or build and you stand there and you see your judge come just imagine that. What will the Lord tell you? Will the Lord tell you to go to my right or to go to my left? Let's prepare. This is a time for us to remember that. Not only a season of preparation, but just having a season of reminder. This Advent is just the only time to prepare, but this is a reminder for us that we need to live a life in preparation for the day. What are the things in your life that you need to remove? The third, candle, is joy. Joy is actually a gift. It's a result when you found something. When, when, when there's something beautiful or where you're, you're looking for it, it, anxiety, it's joy, it's not just happiness. Sabi nila happiness is fleeting. But joy, I think this is what Paul is trying to say in, in this letter to, I'm sorry, James. James chapter 1. It says that count it pure joy, count it true joy, my brother, even when you encounter various trials. Or the testing of your faith produces endurance and so on and so forth. Count it pure joy. Even if you feel. It, it's not just a feeling. Even if. Alam mo yung. Namatayan ka. Nalo ka ng loto. It doesn't matter. Because joy comes not again, not on the things that we see. Joy comes from a relationship with the Lord. Only God can provide the joy. As I have said, it is a gift. In fact, it is an undeserved gift. It is grace. It is not by our own doing. It is not by our own qualifications that the Lord will give Himself to us. It's not about us. It's about God's grace that He provides joy. But the problem is, we replace God. He's the only true source of joy. The problem is, we still long for other sources of joy. God is telling us you are made for heaven. But we do make substitutes. We probably know this already. We have been thrown in our heart. And before, it was me sitting on that throne. God was very, very far. And I thought life was already beautiful. I thought life was already good. But then when I see the faces of Christ with in action, brothers and sisters, their smile is kind of different from mine. I could tell they have something that I don't have. Kung uwi ako sa bahay, smile, smile ako. Para ko sa salamin, hindi ko magkakaya yung smile nila. Iba, when they smile, there's something that they have. I want that. I want what they have. And you know what I discovered? That it was not actually 
anything that the world can offer, not my achievement, not our accomplishments, not the things that we gather. I'm only able to experience joy when I ask God to come into my life. And after tasting a bit, I said, Lord, I want more of you. And I think we did that at one point in our life. I said, Lord, take over. You sit, I stand, and worship you on your throne. We did that, right? We exchanged places. <laughs> Even if we have done that already, accepted God and placed Him on the every now and then, we would kick Him out. Diba? And we realized after early retreat, ay mali, sorry Lord, come back. There's that dynamic in us. And this season is for us actually to remind ourselves, Lord, I really want you to be there on the throne so I will experience the pure joy. The joy that nothing in this world can provide. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Because those who love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is the source of our joy. And if we love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Therefore, no joy. Who is or what is the one sitting on the throne right now? The last but not the least, the fourth candle is the candle of love. Love, I think, is the very message of God to each one of us. At the end of our life, when we see God face to face, He will also ask us the same. Have you loved? He will ask us not, not, naging doktor ka ba talaga? Iyan? Oh, doktor, doktor ako. Actually, iyan, hindi ko tabi ng doktor ka rin. May nagsabi na sa akin, oh, sayang yung pag engineer mo, hindi mo ginamit. Naging missionary ka. Siguro, sayang. Kasi walang kuryente sa pag-missionary. Ah, hindi ka maniniwala sa pag-iwan ito. <laughs> But you know what? In fact, even my state of life, it passed. I had a vision before na nandun na ako sa harap ng Panginoon. Tapos patay na ako. Takarap ko na si Lord. Sabi ni Lord, alam mo, yung nagkakamali na eh. Sinasabihan na kita na for marriage ka. Pinili mo pa rin yung single for the Lord. Mali yung decision mo. Anong pagigyan ng tao? Na yun, baka yun yung sabihin ni Lord sa akin. Kasi when I examine my heart, I just say this, Lord, patawa. Kasi ginawa ko yung mahal kita. Akala ko yun yung magpapaligaya sa'yo. I did that because I love you. Nagkamali ako ng tinig. Kakalang ko. And I experience peace. No. In heaven, that's a very matter because in heaven, there's no marrying or giving in marriage. And so if you love today, if you live a life of love, you're actually living the life of the age to come. The life of eternity. Sabi ni, ni St. Paul sa letter niya sa Corinthians, Hope, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. Bakit kaya? Because in heaven, you will no longer need faith. In heaven, you will no longer hope. As I have said, hope is not hope if what you're hoping for is already there in your presence. If you're hoping for God and God is already there, you don't hope for God. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for in Hebrews 11. What your faith is, where your basis of your faith, which is God, is already there, then you don't need anymore but love remains. And so if you continue to love, if you love now here, if you express our love, we are actually living a life of the age. That life is my own earth. How can I concretely show my love now? Think of a person. 
sino yung unang papasok sa isip mo? Sino nangangailangan ng pagmamahal? Kapatid ba yan? Office leader? Hero pa nga dito. How can you How can you live a life of love? In closing, brothers and sisters who are made for heaven. And if we live in hope, we live in preparation for the second coming. If we live in joy, if we live in love, we are living for what we are made for. We are living that life. Let's aim, as we continue to light the candle in our idol tree, let's remember those areas or those ways where we could actually live out the truth. And our hope is we will live our life well so that when we face God with all the clouds of witnesses by our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, our hope and our dream and our prayer is for us to hear those blessed words, well done, my good and faithful servant. We long to hear those words. When we see that, we hear those words from you. Well done.